And we are going to listen to the second presentation from Mr. Tong Hyuk Lee from Etri. He's going to make a presentation on image generative AI and copyright issues. Please welcome him with a big round of applause. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I am Tung Hyuk Nim from Electronics and Telecommunications Research Institute of Korea. I am in charge of image generative AI, and I am also researching copyright issues. My presentation is titled Image Generative AI and Copyright Issues. Please have a look at the picture. Which one do you think is real? Which one do you think is a real image? And which one do you think was made by AI? This is a post uploaded on Reddit, the community, and many people left their comments. People say that the left one was AI image, and some say the right one is the image made by AI. But no one was able to see which one was actually made by AI. It was also difficult for us to make differentiation between the real one and the one made by AI. It shows the, how developed the AI technology is. In 2014, GAN technology appeared. I think this is the beginning of the full-scale development of AI. GAN refers to Generative Adversarial Network. Creator is trying to create a image that looks like a real one and try to deceive the discriminator. But discriminator continues learning so that it can make distinction between real image and fake image. And the image created by the generator in the end, becomes an image that looks very close to real image. And when Gen appeared, people were so surprised about the quality. But Gen had weaknesses. Gen was not able to generate high resolution image. And we continued studying Gen, and in Three years later, in 2017, MVDI came up with PGGAN. So it was difficult to create high resolution image at once. So NVIDIA thought that if we apply a progressive approach to this, it can create a high resolution image. For example, it first of all works on 4x4 four four image and gradually increases the size by 8 by 8 and 1024 by 1024. If you look at the photos on the right side, these are the photos uh, images created by PGGAN. Based on PGGAN, StyleGAN and many other engines have become able to create high resolution image. In 2020, OpenAI launched GPT-3. As you already heard from previous presentations, GPT-3 is the previous version of ChatGPT. I have been talking about image-generative AI, and now I'm suddenly talking about text uh, image because GPT-3 is very important, and image-generative IA also partially uses GPT-3-related image. So GPT-3 learns in a simple way. It basically guesses what the next word will be in a sentence. For example, my name is Sylvine. This is the learning data. GPT-3 learns this data. So if it shows, if it sees my, it guesses the next word will be name. This is a simple idea. And they apply a massive amount of data. And if, if they use large language model, then a magic is created. The GPT can talk in a way that is uh, even better than the way human beings speak. 
And in this way, the parameters were used to train GPT. From GPT-2, they collected text from web and increased the parameter by 10 times. And the final result is that it was able to speak like human beings. So researches have been conducted to this far. But in 2020, OpenAI used 700 gigabyte texts and increased much more parameters and was able to release GPT-3 that can speak even better than human beings. So they train the model with data, which is at a larger scale. Com For example, we cannot even imagine how large the scale of the data is. And then based on the lessons from GPT-3, OpenAI released another new model. As you see in the first picture, the radish is walking the dog. So if you input the prompt, illustrate a baby daikon radish walking a dog. And such text is converted to image. This engine was able to create image based on the text that was not even existing in the learning data. Whether it be the face of a person or an automobile, the existing engine created an image according to the prompt entered, but the ability of this OpenAI tool was um, even more excellent than we thought. There, Here you see the blue colored ones and red colored ones. Blue one refers to image compression and decoding. Below, you see the explanation about the image. For example, a photo of an astronaut riding a horse. This text is transformed into an image. And it learns the data by using the same method used by GPT-3. So if you enter a prompt, let me uh, please draw a photo of a astronaut riding a horse, then this kind of image is generated. So many people would now understand that we need a large scale data and proper prompt. And in 2022, in just one year after the launch of DALI, mid-journey, another generative AI was launched. It is very good at drawing a picture. An artist named Jason Arlen drew this picture by using Mid Journey, and this artwork received the award in the Colorado's Digital Art Exhibition, and it attracted a great interest from many people. So Mid Journey is often used for drawing a picture like this. And we were thinking about how we could utilize such technologies in our project. So we were researching how the de-identification of face image to protect the portrait right of people. Usually, we apply mosaic to protect the portrait right of people, or we just blur the picture of a face. But instead, we could de-identify the face image by drawing a totally different uh, picture from the real person. For example, if you look at the latent code, it says 105 XX 433. GPT guesses what the next word will be, and in this case, they receive training in a way to f trying to figure out what the next number will be. In this way, we can mask 
the, pers the face of a real person. And if you look at the final results, you get a totally different face of that person. In this way, we can protect the portrait right of a, pe a person. And text-based image generation models have become very common. And text and image data sets are very expensive and not easily available. So we thought about how we can create the text and image uh, the data as a pair. So we thought about using the face of a Korean. Based on the text and image data, we generated image to text sequence to sequence model. So if you put image, you can get the relevant text. So we collected the face uh, of Korean. And we created the Korean face image generating AI. Some call this back translation approach. In 2022, stable diffusion that you might be very much familiar with, stable diffusion was developed by Stability AI. As you see here, it generates good quality pictures, but there's a difference. In the case of Dali and Mid Journey, it was not opened. You can use the service. Um, once you are registered as a user. But in this case, stable diffusion is based on open source. So many people can work on the stable diffusion. Previously, other models used the transformer models, but in this case, they use the diffusion model. It uses forward process. When there is a data, it continuously adds noise to the data. And it thought that it could cause a random noise, but if you remove random noise, you can get an image. This is the concept they used when they developed a stable diffusion. The picture might here, a diagram might look complicated. It is the structure of stable diffusion. It has number one, two, three. It's the number of the models. And noise elimination is done by the unit structure in the middle. When there is random noise, it repetitively removes the noise. And by removing the noise, it accepts the text information from the clip. So if a person enters a prompt, let, please draw this picture, then it reduces noise. And the final latent code is decoded. And then you can get the output image. In the case of stable diffusion, it uses latent diffusion model and lion data set for training. As I said before, it is open source and it is commercially available. And it is not used at high specification server, but at a personal PC. So many people are using stable diffusion. This is open source based tool. So open source ecosystem has rapidly evolved within, for example, one or two months since the launch of stable diffusion. And relevant web UI and control net have been developed. And what is the control net? It is very difficult to use text or speech to control or adjust the posture of a person or gesture of a person. In this way, you can just draw up the uh, bone uh, framework roughly, and then stable diffusion can draw a better quality picture. On the far left side, you can draw a picture beginning from this stage. You can ask the stable diffusion to draw a man wearing sunglasses near a street corner or a woman dancing near a street corner. On the left side, this is the picture of a person doing yoga. So we collect the 
joint related information from uh, the photo and we ask this engine to draw a superhero. By using the existing picture, you can draw a totally new, different picture. So we used the stable diffusion to generate high resolution face, uh, 1024 by 1024, for example, and it, it created high resolution face successfully. And without using transformer structure, you can use diffusion model to de-identify the face of a person. In this case, the model's uh, faces are disclosed, but codes were not disclosed. On the right side, you can see that if you input a certain data set, you can get uh, the output like this. And Korea Copyright Commission has a platform on which we can use some photo data. The left one, the photo on the left one, is the photo we got from the public platform of the Korea Copyright Commission. And we used the stable diffusion, and we were able to de-identify the faces of the models to the right picture. And we thought about how we could use this function for students. So we tried generating clip art by using stable diffusion. For example, students playing soccer in school or students having discussions in a classroom or students having a chemistry experiment. Stable diffusion came up with quite good quality outputs. I've talked a lot about generative AI. Generative AI has been rapidly developed in just two to three years. In 2020, text and codes related research was done. And in 2022, image related research activities were actively carried out. And then video and 3D game and many other applications will be, uh, will be there for generative AI. And in 2025, Google plans to launch Dream Fusion. If you enter a text, it can create a 3D model. This is a function that was already developed. So the technology will evolve uh, furthermore. In terms of video, Runway here is one of the developers of Stable AI. It developed Gen 2. If you apply a text. Now you can generate a video with nothing but words. No driving video. No Once you enter the text, it creates a video. So if you enter a test, please um, make a video of desert, then it comes up with the results. So text to video technology will also evolve very much. Then it will change the way people produce videos in the future. This video was created through AI. The video is looks quite good. Main frames were based on reference image from OpenAI DALI, and it gen used the Runways Gen 2 to create the video. And you hear voices. The voices were created by using ChatGPT. Voice synthesis was done by using the technology of 11 labs, ranging from video to voice. One person can create an AI film like this, including all video and voice content. Of course, there could be some loopholes we have to overcome. One of such loopholes is copyright. When we create this kind of artwork or a model, if we used the copyrighted works without the permission of the copyright holder for AI training, then that could become a problem. 
in the middle of the photo on the left side, you see the watermark of Getty image. This is an image generated by stable diffusion, but it shows you Getty image watermark. It means that this generative AI used Getty images for training. This is why the Getty image has begun legal proceedings against stable diffusion for the infringements on its copyright. And three creators also filed a lawsuit against Stable Diffusion and Mid Journey for infringing on their copyright because they use their artworks, copyrighted works, without their permission. So this is why we become conservative about the copyright issues of generative AI. But let's have a look at another case, Shutterstock. Shutterstock has taken a different move from Dali, from other companies. Shutterstock partnered with Dali2, and Shutterstock provides the copyrighted images to Dali, and Dali makes compensation to the creators of the copyrighted images in Shutterstock. So Getty Image and Shutterstock are taking very different approaches to dealing with the generative AI. Next case is Adobe. Adobe has a lot of data, and it has the technology of generative AI for image generation. So Adobe decided that it will create images from its generative AI by using clean data source, by using their own data source. So Adobe is promoting that it is using its own data source from Adobe stock. Here, the important is that you have to be careful with open license content and public content whose copyright expires. So if you use open license content or public content whose copyright has expired, then you can avoid the copyright uh, issues. So rather than just uh, prohibiting the generative AI from using any uh, image sources, we can explore ways for them to be able to legally and legitimately using the image. So Getty Image and Shutterstock can partner with each other and provide copyrighted works as a training data set to generative AI with proper compensation to the creators and owners of the copyright. And Stable Diffusion had images that they used without the permission of the copyright holder. And Stable Diffusion went through the legal uh, proceedings. So Stable Diffusion opened a website where the original copyrighted work owners or creators can search for an information whether their copyrighted works were used for training the generative AI, and they can choose to delete uh, such image or artworks. So legitimately collecting data is very important. And how can we collect data legitimately? It depends on the countries. In the case of the EU, if a generative AI is trained based on a copyrighted work. Such information should be disclosed, and copyright owner can require royalty for using uh, his or her own copyrighted work. And in the case of Japan, Japan has more open um, attitude. In Japan, they allow copyrighted works to be used for AI learning, but uh, the US and the UK have uh, some somewhat different models. It depends on the jurisdiction. But in principle, 
it's important to collect the data legitimately. You have to have consultation with the copyright owners. If it is difficult, for example, there are some types of data that is licensed. In the case of licensed data, if you meet a certain conditions uh, put by the copyright holder, then you can use it, such as com Creative Commons license. On the top uh, of the table, you see the type of license data. If you mark the copyright holder about the copyrighted work, you can use it. And depending on the conditions, some license data can be used for non-profit purposes, but not for for-profit purposes. So you need to refer to this information to ensure that you collect data legitimately for image generative AI. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you very much for your presentation. Image generative AI has been gradually evolving. We learned a lot about how this technology is evolving and about the relevant issues. Please give him a big round of applause again.